expected. All right, well, remember when the auto CEOs got reamed for flying their corporate jets to Washington? Remember that? Now there's a report that's tucked away inside a defense bill. $200 million for um, three private jets. Only these are going to be used to shuttle members of Congress and other government officials around. Well, Rand Paul, the son of Ron Paul, joins you right now, his reaction. Um, and he's also going to be making a rather big announcement on this show. Uh, real quick reaction to that, then I want to talk to you about your announcement. Well, I want to see my congressman flying coach, Southwest Airlines coach, and waiting in line like everybody else to get on the plane. Um, I think people are offended by that. It reminds me of, do you remember John Laboudier, sure. ran for congressman from New York? He ran one ad, and his whole ad was a picture of the world with red lights all over it saying, your congressman's been flying to Paris, Rio de Janeiro, at taxpayer expense. He says, if you elect me, the only plane flight I'll take is from, Washington, from New York City to Washington, D.C., and he beat an incumbent with that message. I think people are outraged speaking of by which, abuse. Speaking of which, that's what you're doing. Yes. What are you going to do? I am here today on the Neil Cavuto Show and happy to announce that I am formally announcing my candidacy for the U.S. Senate from Kentucky. I run for office because... You're running for the Republican. As a Republican for the U.S. Senate. Would you have Senate. done this had Benning funding not stepped down? We had made plans to make our announcement either way because it had become uncertain whether he was running. But the real reason I run for office is because I think the debt is consuming us. And I see career politicians on both sides, Republican and Democrat. I mean, look, when the Republicans were in charge for eight years, we didn't do a very good job of controlling the debt. Now the Democrats are in charge, and it's three times worse. I think the problem is you elect people who their career is politics instead of having a career in something else like medicine. And their sole, you know, what they have to do is to get reelected, and so they vote for the special interest. And it's a self-perpetuating cycle, and that's why the deficit explodes. So if you get in there, there's, your dad is a prominent congressman, you'll kind of be a bigger cheese than he will. Yeah, I'm wondering if he'll be asking you for advice <laughs> um, Your dad has criticized the system and what it takes just to get elected in the system. Right. Uh, you're going to need to raise a lot of money. Yeah, and I think it's the greatest irony of American politics that universally, conservative or liberal, when you ask people in the media or the public, is money corrupting the system? Everybody says yes. But the news cycle is driven by how much you raise. So the horse race, until the votes are counted, is always he's raised this or she's raised that. And so it drives the cycle and it self-perpetuates, I think, the corruption of money in politics. But it's not really the money so much as that it's the people are getting something special from government, people who get billion-dollar contracts. So well, they tend to be rewarded, doctor, not the ones who don't. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to tell me now you're the guy who's going to say, I'm not the guy bringing home the bacon. Exactly. They might say, exactly. Uh -oh. And I think there are ways you can reform campaign finance. McCain-Feingold, I think, was wrong because it abrogated the First Amendment. And I have a taxpayer group. And it's illegal for me to buy advertising on your show within 60 days of the election because of McCain-Feingold. That's wrong. But I think there's another way you could go about it. You could say, if Neil Cavoto Incorporated gets a million-dollar government contract, I would make a clause in the contract that says that you voluntarily agree to not lobby Congress and not give PAC donations. But it would be a voluntary clause. All right, so it would be a little less mandatory. Well, it would only be if you want to take a okay, million-dollar contract. Okay, let me ask you. Um, is your dad going to campaign for you? We already have him scheduled at a few fundraisers. We have four fundraisers scheduled in Texas in the next month, and he'll be there. Okay. Now, how about in Kentucky itself? We haven't made a decision yet. I would like him to come. Um, he's a big draw. Everywhere he goes, he gets so, thousands of people. And uh, it's a double-edged sword. It really, I couldn't do this without him, and I have great respect for him, and I think history will look kindly on what he's been able to do. But also, I need to be my own person. I need to present my own issues, and I don't need to be seen just as the son of Ron Paul, but also don't run away from it. I mean, it, it allows you me to get started. You as much as a rebel as he is, <laughs> sort of like likes to be the thorn in the side of everybody. Uh, well, I you go, say that with respect. But uh, yeah, well, I go around Kentucky promising people that I will vote against any unbalanced budget, Republican or Democrat, because I think that's how I distinguish myself. I also well, they're all unbalanced. That's what I mean. So I'll be voting against quite a few people, quite a few budgets if I'm in Washington. But the other thing I say is the worst vote, I think, of the last generation is the bank bailout vote. Half of the Republican leadership voted for it, but I've been to 20 counties in Kentucky, and I have yet to meet one Republican primary voter who would have been for the bank bailout. I'm going to be running as an independent Republican.
<laughs> got the protection of the R. Right? There you go. Well, right. our system yeah. is set up for two parties. The rules are very hard for any third party to run. Yeah. I think people do hunger for independence. Right. And when I tell people that I'm not going to judge issues on Republican or Democrat, they sit up and listen because a lot of my patients are Democrats. Okay. But they like the idea that you'll judge it on the issue, not on which party presents the issue. Okay. Well, we have a lot of doctors in Congress who could join an elite group. <laughs> um, doctor, thank you very much. Good thank having you. Thank you for having me.